Let me say, I'm gonna say it before you jump in. What up? What up? Welcome to the Norm Part Podcast. I wasn't gonna do it this time. Yes, you were. <laughs> he was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get one of those in a while. <laughs> Yo, what's up? What's up, guys? What's going on? Everything good. Everything what's, good. Yeah, we hanging in there. We good hanging to in be there. Back. What's God the is, word? God is good, man. Nah, we good. We good. God is good. Praise Him. How's the work week? Hectic. Quick went quick. <laughs> the doctors this is the doctor corner right there. Yeah. This is the Sons Ave corner. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Speak for yourself. <laughs> it's the number one Sons Ave over here. <laughs> what does Sons Ave mean anyway? A bum. Oh. Okay. No word. No yeah, word. hooligan. Uh, hooligan bum thug. Y'all some fly bums though, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice shirt. That man. was an old man. That's a nice shirt. Chill, chill, stop. Yeah, yeah, babe, it's a nice shirt, though. Yeah. You like the salmon? Yeah, babe. <laughs> I think it, it's nope. not the salmon, yeah, man, but it's something about it. Mm. It looks like it's quality. You looks think it's salmon <laughs> or more like, um, like looks, a purple, purple. type? Uh, what's yeah. the? Yeah, it's the color, man. Yeah, it's dope, though. Yeah, we're, we're colorblind as men. I see salmon. Really? Well, it looks purple. No, you're right. It is, it is a little purple. Oh. It makes me look responsible. It's That's like what a, it is. It's more it like makes a, me look responsible. It don't right? make you look like a sunset. Like, <laughs> right. It's a lavender. Lavender. Yeah, there's something Yo, about it. Like I go to work right? every day yeah, yeah, and yeah, make yeah. sure I'm not late. <laughs> 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 Just take responsibility for the little things. <laughs> for the little things, dog. Responsible, B. Um, yeah, man. Another buy. I look forward to these hour and a half so that we get to spend um together in the word um just dissecting god's word and mm. asking questions and not coming up with <laughs> good enough answers <laughs> speculating <laughs> speculating and 45 minutes at a time <laughs> but listen man we the holy spirit always finds a way to you know get us in the right direction so i'm not worried about it Yo, listen, man, you could be talking about a lot of other things for an hour and a half, man. Word <laughs> up. <laughs> That's how I look at it, dog. Yeah. So every bit of Word. speculation and arguing and back and forth we do, right. we, yo, B, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of content out there, man. How, how long <laughs> How long we been stumbling and bumbling through the scripture? It's been a minute? Yeah. The yeah. show? Yeah, man. But yeah. I'm just saying, there's a lot, yeah. there's a lot of content out there, so... I'm wow. just blessed that the Lord has given me this to talk about and figure out and yeah. go through. Like, I get to reason with God, man. Yeah. yeah and, so. and the second half of your life, yeah. already 30 <laughs> years of talking <laughs> down the drain, right? <laughs> talking nonsense. <laughs> and, and plus, yeah, I'm talking real. online. Oh, man. Where this is going out on the internet and it's going to stay there forever. I wouldn't be talking about anything else except the word of God. Jesus. Yo. All day, B. I, mm, I'm, you know I'm thankful, B. Nah, real talk. Yeah. You know. But it's hey, man. Blessing. You know, people can talk about whatever they want to talk about. It's, it's, it's not a country. knock to anybody else. It's just it's a free country. And, and plus I'm I don't I'm not qualified to talk about ninety nine percent of the I'm not even qualified to talk about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. The <laughs> other stuff, I'm not even qualified to talk about it. Right. You know, I'm not I don't know. So, you mm -hmm. know, but there's there's options. Right. Yeah, but, I, yeah. This is, I think this is the greatest enjoyment. I think I get more pleasure and more joy sitting here fighting with you guys over the scriptures than any other thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't fight, guys. Well, right? Okay, we discuss and you we know, discuss. we discuss, and I I rather that than anything else. No, nah, man, it's I I, I enjoy just um, the revelation. Mm. You know, and the that, fellowship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to 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 be going through the Word of God, it's like every time you read it, you get something out of it. Mm. Like I could study <clears throat> and prepare for here and come here, and I learned more just in this hour and a half than yeah. the whole week maybe preparing yeah. right, right. for here. You know, yeah, and I works. love and happens. I love that that God, that the Holy Spirit is never idle. He's not sleeping, man. You know, where, where, where people are gathered in his name and just wanting to um, know about him. Like, God wants you to know about him. Mm. Like, he, he don't hide himself. Like, he's mm. not hiding himself. Like, he wants you, he wants mankind to know about him. You know, he's open, he's transparent. 
I think about God being in heaven and having a host. Like, what is the purpose of having a host? You know, you got, like, when we read in Revelation, you see 24 elders and angels. Like, what's the purpose of that? And I always think that because God is transparent, mm -hmm. he, don't, he don't have nothing to, like, there's no darkness in him. So it's like I do everything I do in front of an audience all the time. Nice, that's mm. dope, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Like, it, like my character is really, I am who I say I am. That's why, like, when Moses was like, you know, who, who, who do I say sent me? He's like, I am. Mm. Like, that's it. Like, I am who I say I am. And, he, and he, he's not afraid to just show it all the time. Like, you know, God is so real. He's, he, he is who he says this. It says he dwells in unapproachable light. You know, there's no darkness in him, you know. And I just, you know, every time we go through the word, that gets revealed more and more to me. How God is just so... um. He's just so transparent and so real, so honest and so true, so mm -hmm. faithful. All these things about that he says that he is, he is. And when you read mm -hmm. his word, that gets revealed to you. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, we just, we want everybody to know that about God. And as, as Christians, right, as the beings from above, right, born again Christians, um, you know, we're reading about Abraham and how he lived his life. Right. The, the things that kind of symbolize who he was. Right. He was living in tents. And, you know, we read he, he gains he gains wealth. He gains assets and riches, but he still lived in this temporary state. And the altars. Um, and with that mind frame, you always want to invest in the future. Right. So. You know, I, I think about that Bema seat when things get weighed out. You know, if you was talking about something else, investing all this time into other things, how does that translate in the after, you know, in, in the other life? Mm. Is it going to be hay wood? Is it just going to burn? Mm. Right? Or are you going to do things in God's will? Mm that's going to be in good be a good investment for the life that is to come right building towards the kingdom mm. you know that's that's kind of how i look at it where it's, it's it's a double blessing you get blessed now where we're able to just come together and enter the heavenlies right where we just focus on the word of god and we get into this this zone where it's like we're in we're in heaven right. you know like that's that's how i describe it like we're sitting here we're talking about the word of god it's like everything else doesn't even matter mm -hmm. right so we're entering into this spiritual realm because we're talking about spiritual things and you're investing in that spiritual life that's soon to come how do you, how do you think it's going to look like when you're staring at the lord burning up that hay wooden stubble right in front of you Y'all, because I didn't got nothing. <laughs> so I'm just wondering how y'all going to feel. That was hey, wooden stubble right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just, if you didn't have none, you just... You how just, that's going to be? I'll be like, yo, <laughs> yo, Mike, you had all that hey, yeah. <laughs> If you didn't have none, like, you yo, just Mark, picked it up. Yo, Mark, you're up next, <laughs> Yo, Mark is where that stubble. <laughs> he just picked up a whole bunch, too. whole episode. <laughs> Sawdust. Yo, his yo. card probably had zero. And just because of that comment... <laughs> Straight negative... <laughs> You gotta get them calls. Yeah, I'm just, yo, as long as y'all go first, and collection. Y'all go first, and collection. So I can calls. see what y'all stubble look like when it burns. Yo, man, it's, and mine come out with gold. You know what I'm saying? Yo, <laughs> yo he don't even understand. He's accumulating just hey, yo, Every the time Lord he know my heart. Every time he opens, yeah, your heart is wicked. Every time <laughs> bubble, up every time he wicked, opens baby. his mouth, <laughs> using that rush card. <laughs> <laughs> yo, what happened? Bounce. What happened to the? Yo, <laughs> yo what happened to the rush card? Zero. <laughs> got zero balance got on zero that rush card, baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, yo, yo, that's yo, hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yo, my man was like, yo, I ain't got none, and the thing just said, ting, 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 ting. that check your bank what? account now, you buddy. You just see the whole bunch of Sonic rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> That's oh, hilarious. Man. Yeah, you guys are wild. All right. Yo, let's get in Let's get to the word, baby. man. We're in Genesis chapter 13. What happened in chapter 12? 
Abraham is a liar. <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's what right. He is. His he's poor wife, man. Yeah. Liar, Half truth B. is a full lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a straight liar, B. You know, use his wife as a shield. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Try to, you know, cover himself, get out of a tough situation yeah, that he got her in. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm wondering if. When he Yo, got this, you don't ever use your wife as a shield. Yeah, throw her straight under the bus. <laughs> I mean, he, he learned that from his father Adam. <laughs> exactly. Mm. He's the image. He's yeah, the babe. image of Adam. That's it, man. You know that mm. that that same, tendency. Yeah, yeah the yeah, same that tendency, tendencies that yeah. Adam had when he threw Eve under the bus. It's the same thing here. But um, I'm wondering if when he started getting the stuff, like maybe you felt bad in the beginning, and then when you got paid, like. I want. I, I just. I wonder where he was at. Yo, you know, yeah. was he still like, oh, I got all this stuff, and oh, what I did to my wife was, yo, I got all this stuff. Maybe I could get a new one. You know what mm. I mean? Like, yeah. I, I just want to know where he was at. Like the scriptures don't say it. Right. Speculation. No, you, I you wonder. Know, I wonder where he was at. No, you know why? I don't think that. Why? Because he only had one wife. Mm-hmm. He's seventy. He was seventy-five. Right. That's a lot of time. Right. And she was barren. But that's why he was like, I'm gonna get a new one. No, he would have been though he would have been Dasha. Dasha. Right. Yeah. That wasn't the kind of guy that he was. Listen, fear, right? Fear. This guy has a lot of responsibilities. Mm-hmm. He got a lot of people that's depending on him. A famine hit. I get it. It was still wrong, but I could understand it. But that's what but like think about people like that. Okay. You with somebody, you hit you hit. You get the bag. I could get a new one. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because men go through it all the time. People, not even men, just human beings. You with somebody, you with somebody, and then you come up. Now you a superstar. Now money's coming in, and after a while, it's like you start to you start to act funny. You know. So I'm not saying that. No, no. I'm just I, saying that after it happened, now you got the bag. You probably like you was barren. You yeah, know what? Son, but I could was, get a new be, one. It was light work. What was like work? in the culture? What like was it was work? so easy to get, you know. Oh no, I get it. I get it. He was a high value man. Nah, but like you said, he wasn't <laughs> like. <laughs> Yo, why are you looking at me? He was. <laughs> he was a high. He was a high value guy. Right? Yeah, right, he was right. a high he, value man. He was. Right. He had stuff. Right. He had possessions. <laughs> probably greater than six figures. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, he was, and that's what I'm saying. Now you up. You got stuff. It's like, yo, B. Yeah, I did I it. I think he would have did it bad. from before. No. Yeah. Like, yo, you're barren. You can't even get me a son. Dog, did, now you up. He would have been like, yo, sure. Do you, do you burn the rice? Yo. <laughs> no, but now you. <laughs> listen. Before, I'm going to come up with a reason to that. Listen, you. before. Okay, you just inherited your pop's house. You got. Okay, let's say you, you went from making 40 grand a year to 80 grand a year. Dog, this is. Now you make a half a mil. This is half a mil a year type money. Yeah, but you know, and but, you probably like, yo, you know what? But I'm, but I'm I was better that. off. I couldn't have no kids with her. I'm just thinking. Was I, I'm just I'm just speculating. Say, but yeah, but, but, but Sarah was still smoking though. She was she was she a, was she smoking. Was a, she was a ten. Right, but my thing is now you just hit the lottery. And your your be Satan is a liar. Your dog. I could get another Sarah. I could get another 10. Yeah, I could get another 10. I'm just, I'm speculating. I don't, th- listen, I don't think that, I don't think that that was his mind frame because Abraham's, Abraham's my man. But I'm just saying, but now you, because that's why I said he he lied. You pimped her off and then you got blessed. And you got I should say you up. got blessed no, with well, it, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you, you leveled, leveled up. up. You leveled up. Now you, yeah. now you went from a 80 grand dude to half a mil, 600, 700 grand. Now you start, eh. Yeah, I loved her, but I got money now. Because money, you'll be, that's what money do. Money changes people. And we're going to see the effects of money in the family. That's but I don't think it had. I don't know what you're you saying. But I'm yeah. throwing it out there because it happens to us all the time. Right. That's applicable. We'll sell it out. That's applicable to our lives now. Yeah. yeah. And relationships now. And we see the effects of money. And that's why and I'm saying. And then we're going to get into chapter 13, and we're going to see how the effect of Abraham being blessed mm-hmm. abundantly mm-hmm. cause strife in the family. Right. But let me ask you though, do you think, how do you think he felt as he was walking out and he just got uh, rebuked by an unbeliever? 
you know, with Farrah and all of it. How do you think? You think he had the walk of shame? Of course. Do you he think did. you realize? He ain't saying nothing. Look at him. He quiet. He, he was, was like, just, get out, and he just left. Yeah, it was shame. Mm-hmm. And he he realized, right? As these things are happening, as the plague hit Pharaoh, he know yeah. that mm-hmm. the Lord intervened, right? Mm-hmm. The Lord is not mentioned in this section of the scripture. Right. Like, it doesn't say anything about the Lord. But in the back of his mind, he's like, yeah, he remember the promise. He remember what yeah, the Lord the said. Lord. He remember probably the Lord meeting him, that theophany, having a conversation that the Lord's like, yo, I'm going to give you this land. Yo, you good. He just got yeah, caught that, up. He, he got caught up in, in caught the, up. the um, you know, the, the, the tribulation came through. Yeah. The hard times came through. And he buckled. Yo, that is the hardest thing is when a non-believer rebuke you and check you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> yo, that yeah, happened check. to me. All the you time. <laughs> Oh yeah, all the yeah. I still you know, getting rebuked. Yo, it and is. And I, I have to, I have to do what Abraham's about to do. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo so one time, what happened to me was like I was sick in the office, right? And I was like, "Dang, I don't know." Yeah, and one of the tech came to me. He's like, "Yo, man, I always take you know some bag of normal saline. I take it home, you know, and I, you know, give it to my wife and me or whatever, and run a line through some fluids. And you get through fluids, and you start feeling better, you know." I said, "Yeah." Let me get a couple of bags from the office, a couple of bags of normal saline, and I go home, I start a line on them, you know, and then I'll feel better. Then as I'm walking back, he's like, wait a second, aren't you Christian? That would be stealing, wouldn't it be? Oh, I said, wow. Oh, yeah, he sort of set, set up. you up, son. <laughs> oh. I said, you're right. The devil's a liar, B. <laughs> the devil's a liar. You, walk, you walked right horrible. into that. I walked yeah, right into dog. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but um, nah, yeah, Abram, you know, like... A famine came, tight situation came, and you, you know, you probably was, you resulted back to the old man. Like, you know, probably finagling. Try, try to figure things out. Figure things out. And I mean, you know, I think I said it last episode, I mean, we, we do it all the time. You know, when things get tight, mm. your first, your natural reaction is to just go back to what you used to do. Right. Go back to your old ways or try to figure it out without God. But, you know. It always ends up being a mess, and we see how the uh, we're gonna see how the effects of just that decision it it affected a lot of people, you know. All right, so let's get into um, chapter thirteen. So why are you laughing for? <laughs> Yo, you're Nate. Go ahead, man. <laughs> one to one. It's, li- it's live. It's live. It's live. <laughs> uh, let's go to uh, one, two, seven. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Lot well, home. Th- this, hmm? Let's stop right there. Let's All stop right. right there. And just kind of go into it. So he went up from Egypt, leaving Egypt and going back. He got his wife, everything that he had, and lot with him. I, I was I was reading a, a a commentary and they highlighted the order of things. Mm. You know, it, it's it's uh, you know it's Abraham and then his wife and then all that he had, right? All had that he had, which constitutes the servants and his possessions. Mm-hmm. And after that, it mentioned Lot which was kind of pointing to the the rift that was going growing between them whereas at other times it would place lot maybe before the possessions mm. which was I I thought that was interesting it's pretty interesting so you kind of seeing he, he now he has all these possessions right he has all the cattle right and then he has silver and gold i would attribute the cattle part to you know pharaoh Mm-hmm. Giving them all that, you know, the silver and gold might have been from something else. I think it was also from Pharaoh, the dowry, because that was traditional for you to, you know, because they were probably giving him dowry when he, you know, oh, threw Sarah, Sarah, Sarah off under the bus. 
You know? Well, it said, you know, before it said he treated Abraham well for her sake. Yeah. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, um, male and female servants, okay. female donkeys and cattle. Okay. So all those okay. things okay. he got from Pharaoh. So maybe, okay. gotcha. <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know, maybe Abraham kind of took advantage of the time with the famine. And also, you know, he was he was traveling. So maybe he was able to make money and took advantage of that situation. Maybe he got it from his father, but he grew in those things also, right? Silver and gold. Listen, people make money in a pandemic. Yo, ain't <laughs> <laughs> people can make money in, in a bad situation, right. right? And I don't know, but he I'm, grew in those things. Yeah. But we saw specifically mm-hmm. that, you know, the Egyptians gave him you mm-hmm. know, cattle, animals, and those things, and right, yeah. he also had silver and gold. Ain't nothing wrong with the Lambo, B. <laughs> I try to tell y'all. Yo, I seen it when I was reading. It. I said, "Yo, Marcus is I'm right. trying to tell y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with the Lambo. Now nah, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, you right. He 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 grew in grew in wealth. Definitely. He grew in wealth. Um, now he's going back where he had been in the beginning. I'm going back to where I was before I went to Egypt. What a detour, B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the author is silent in the time, how long he was there, you know, how long the fa- the famine lasted. It's, the, all that is silent. But yeah. I think we get the point that, you know, I think he's coming back um, a different person. Definitely. All right. I don't think he waited until the famine to end. You know, Pharaoh yeah, was like, Yo. Pharaoh was like, you get out. Pharaoh was like, get out. But even, but that's just the grace of the Lord is that he sent him back with more than he had. Even if there was still a famine going on, he had the the means to get through until it was done. Right. And that's probably how he could have accumulated the gold and the silver. By yeah. selling. Selling stuff to Bitcoin, other people. that type of thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Investing. Some uh, some Ethereum. Ethereum. Some crypto. Like, some crypto. Some XRP. <laughs> some, some Ripple. <laughs> Dodge. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> We're not financial advisors. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't even biblical advisors. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what y'all listening to. <laughs> don't take advice from us. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. All right, so let, yeah, let's go on. Let's go five to seven. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, and they might that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. Go go to nine. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Mm-hmm. All right, so what's happening? There was some beef, Don. So you know what's very interesting, though? Um, from the very first, uh, from verse 5, he says, Lot also who went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents, right? So now you see clearly he they showing you that Lot also had you know great wealth, just as Abraham had great wealth, but he also had tents, but you don't hear any mention of an altar. While when he talks about um, Abram, he talks about he, he moved in tents and he established altars. Right. So now we're beginning to see a picture right here that he had the flocks and he had the tents, but there's no mention of an altar. Mm. So there's no mentioning, mentioning of worshiping, of going to the Lord, or anything of that such. So that's mm. one of the first things that stood out to me. Right. It's a... And- it don't mention that he had gold and silver, right? Who lot? Yeah, it said no. he had livestock. Livestock, you know, he had stuff like that. So yeah. you know, your uncle. I'm looking at it. Your uncle, he got gold, he got silver, he got livestock. I mean, like, so now you coming up? You know, you the nephew, you coming up, working and, for the fam, right? And you know, now you you're starting to grow a little. Like you said, he's starting to grow a little bit more. But it, it says it. You know, I noticed that it it says that it didn't say that he had gold and silver and um you know now that now the now the herdsmen are beefing amongst each other they're getting too big and what i noticed with 
with Abram is, you know, I think he learned from that whole situation before, you know, coming, coming out of the famine, he was quick to rush to go to Egypt and try to provide for yourself. And now I'm looking at it like, you know, because he was the, the head of the household, he should have been able to pick first, but he gave that right to his nephew. And I'm looking at his faith now, like whatever you pick, it don't matter. The Lord is going to provide for me. You know, and I'm seeing him grow in this faith now where before in the famine you was quick to rush and do your own thing. Now it's like, even though you had that right, he was like, listen, you gave it to your nephew. And it's kind of, I'm looking at it like he preserved this relationship that he had with his nephew. Because you, you got to understand, they are beefing at this time. Mm -hmm. The herdsmen are beefing at this time. There's, you know, there's this internal war within the family. And by him making that move, putting himself last and putting his nephew first, I'm seeing him value that relationship between him and his nephew right. more than his possessions. And you're right. talking about this is a man dealing with wealth. You're right. But you're seeing the mind frame that money didn't run Abram. Didn't dictate yeah, his life. Yeah, it didn't dictate his life. And this was the move that showed me that for him to be the head of the household and allow your nephew to pick first, having this beef, you was like, I'll, I'd rather preserve our relationship this family, I'd rather preserve my family, the relationship I have with my nephew, than over my wealth. My, the, the money don't mean nothing to me. Like we gotta, we gotta, we gotta rectify this situation, man. And that, and that is in direct contradistinction with Lot, because a Lot, as a um, in the tradition, as a younger man, he should have immediately yeah. submitted himself right. and give Abraham Abram the right to choose. Yeah, and said, you know what, you're the head of the household, and I need to respect you as an elder. That's why he's a sucker. Yo, y'all bashing lot. I see. I already see this little <laughs> corner bashing he lot, man. He should have honored Abram, his uncle, Yo, who man. took him everywhere. This dude's like a third wheel. Everywhere you read the scripture, and lot, and lot, because he's important, lot. man. No, he ain't he's important. He's important to the to, to yo, what's about to and happen. Lot. And lot messed up. And, yo, but yo, <laughs> he he don't want you to. Fight. And that's why I said last episode, you know, like like you said, he's this third wheel. And that's why I'm like, you know, Lot went with him, and then Abram took him. I'm like, you shouldn't have took Lot, man. Even though I love Lot, you know, shout out to Yo, Lot. Why you I, love him so much, bro? Because he was a righteous man. Bro, you don't even show me that much love. Man. He be like, oh, Lot, because you ain't Lott. righteous. You know no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy. I'm that's filthy, not, baby. That's <laughs> so we see another test, right? Another test is coming at Abraham, Abram at the time, um, and. He he did he got it right this time, yeah. right? Because I think he learned from the whole Egypt thing, and then he went back, right? And then we read that when he went back to the place of the altar, he called on the name of the Lord. So now we're seeing this this reestablishing of this relationship, right? A calling calling on on God, and obviously with sometimes you know more money, more problems. So now we're seeing problems occurring. You know, with Lot and his his crew, his servants, his herdsmen, and and the wealth that they're accumulating, you know, between these two, between the family and the family, it, it happens all the time, right? This is not new. Family feud. Um, but I also see the blessing that Lot received from being with his uncle mm -hmm. Abraham, mm -hmm. right? Because as as Abraham grew in wealth, mm -hmm. so did Lot. Mm -hmm. right? He benefited great point. from being with his right. I'll bless those that bless you, and I'll curse him who curse you. So you seeing the blessing is is being extended to Lot himself. Mm -hmm. So now, um, Abraham is faced with a situation, right? Uh, socially, Abraham is superior, right? In the social structure, he's the head, and you see him humble himself to the situation. For the sake of peace, yep. right? In order that peace could be maintained, I'm going to humble myself. And I'm going to let you pick the land, the land that the Lord gave him. So you got to understand, it, it took a step of faith for him to do that. Yeah. Because now he's like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm giving away and letting this guy choose something that the Lord promised to give me. So I got a question, though, Go ahead. you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Could it be that him giving a lot that choice, he already knew that all of this belonged to him anyway? 
That's how come he wasn't worried. Because was it totally altruistic? No, nah, um, that's was a it? good question, but I don't think so. Okay, I'm just throwing it out there. But yeah, I don't think so. Think, think about it, yeah. right? I give you this land. Now it's for you and your seed. Lot is not his kid. Lot, that's not his son. That's his... He elevates Lot to brethren. Mm -hmm. He said, yo, we're, we're brothers. We shouldn't be beefing. So you see how Abraham is, is humbling himself and he's bringing Lot to his level when he... Socially, he didn't have to do that. You know, based on the culture, he could have been like, yo, man. Yo, get out of here. Matter of fact, just leave. Right. But we... we we see Abraham trying to maintain the peace, maintain the love, and he was willing to sacrifice what he had mm -hmm. in order to preserve that relationship, that brotherly relationship. Yeah. I got right. a quick verse. Can I read this just in uh, yeah. what you're saying? Mm -hmm. This is Romans 12, 10. It says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love yep. in honor, giving preference to one another. Mm -hmm. Word. And... Jumping on that, sort of in that same vein, where well, you mentioned John 17 before, right? Um, if you read John 17, we can start at like verse 22. When the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect and one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Mm. The reason why we as Christians have to love each other is for what? So that the world can see that Jesus was sent them mm. and i just see that you know those verses there just the strife why 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 do they mention that the the canaanites and the parasites were there because mm -hmm. they were witnessing that strife between you know the, um, the family and as christians there are so many times on social media where people post things that no i don't agree with but i'm not getting in their comments fighting with them but you can see them fighting each other as christians like oh this doesn't mean that this doesn't mean that and it, it's, it's just it's sad you know, I think that as Christians, there has to be that unity um, for the world to know that Jesus was sent. Amen. And it's Amen. like verse seven, it says, you know, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of live of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzite and the Pe Perizzites then dwelt in the land. It's like this bickering and beefing is happening amongst the other, you know, amongst, let's say, the world. In that sense, that's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. you know, and mm -hmm. um, it's I'm looking at how responsible Abraham handled it. Yeah, you know, and it's like even you know I think about like Christians, like us as like like what you were saying, Ange, but even like in a church, you know, Christians just fighting amongst each other, mm. and you know the world is always watching. You yeah. know, like you said, it's is what Christ says. How are you gonna know that? How are they gonna know that you're my disciple? By the, the love, love you show one another. Love, exactly. You know, he didn't say about the love you showed the world. or the, No, by the love you show right. one another. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, because the world is constantly watching. And I'm just seeing just a example here. You know, the herdsmen are fighting. And then you got to think, the Canaanites, they're like, ain't this altar man? You know, you altar man. <laughs> like, you, yeah, you, you, I always see you over there worshiping your God. Your God is the true and living God. You over here, you, right? And now y'all beefing, really? You know how they get. You know, right, they can't right. wait to gossip and tear it apart right, and tear, right. you know, um, a church apart. A yeah. So, you know, sometimes it hurts me so much to just hear about when churches is fighting. When you're having a civil war in the church, you know, God. you have this side mm -hmm. that believes this or this side that, and then, you know, you have a split, split in the church, mm -hmm. you know, because two people can't just come together mm -hmm. and hash it out. And you're and seeing mm -hmm. Abraham even being, you superior. know, like, right, superior. He took the, the, the low road just to preserve the relationship, you know, to preserve the family. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just look at it as just us as Christians, man, we have to be careful because, you know, that's how the world you know, sees Jesus. We're we're a representation of Christ. So when we're fighting amongst each other, especially in the church, you know, and you see his his uh, spiritual su superiority mm -hmm. based on how he handled that situation, and he was he was confident enough in the promise of God to be generous, right? And Abraham understanding that everything I have comes from God, yeah. it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt me to give it to you. Right. And, yeah. and I think that's that's a lesson as Christians. Yeah. Right. We, we need to um, live that way, to be generous to others, knowing that everything that we get 
we get from God. He's not going to run out, right. right? So Abraham understood that he was still in the will of God, even though he was given away some of this land that Lot, that God gave him. Right. He was giving it to Lot, but God told him, yo, this is for you and your descendants. But he understood the importance of, like you said, showing that love, that testimony, and that the Lord is going to continue to provide, mm -hmm. right? This is not going to hurt me, mm -hmm. you know? So that humility, that um, love, um, you know, him him prioritizing that that relationship. That's why he said, yo, we're brothers. He didn't say, yo, you, you little nephew, mm. play a role. Yep. <laughs> he said he, he elevated him to, to equal status and right. said, yo, we're brothers. Yo, let's not fight. Yo, matter of fact, yo, where do you want to go? Go ahead, pick. Yeah. Now, now we start seeing Lot, right? We start seeing Lot and his character come out and how he responded right. to that. Yeah, this is. I, I just love what you said. Uh, what you guys are saying because this goes back to um, a true lordship issue. Whenever there's beef amongst people, even with marriages, friendships, whatever it is, it's who's willing to submit to the will of God, right. and who's willing to just be obedient to God in order to bring peace and restore relationship. And mm -hmm. this is exactly what we're seeing here: is that Abraham values that, and he's he's submitting to God and His way as opposed to just taking upon himself and acting out in a fleshly way. And that's because he's been setting up his tents and his altars. Because he was an altar man, he's constantly seeking the Lord. So the Lord is changing him and, you know, strengthening him and growing his faith that he has that confidence in who God is and that God is the provider. So altar man, altar man. <laughs> so, uh, Ange, go to 10, 10 to 13. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go toward Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tents even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Mm. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. So how did Lot respond? Like a sucker, man. <laughs> he lifted his eyes and he lusted of all the plain of Jordan because it was well watered. Yeah. But that's Mike's people. That's who he liked to chill with, you know? <laughs> man, B. Lot is, in, Lot is in heaven, B. I don't, don't worry about it. You're going to have to, you deal with him when you see him. So hey, tell him to come see me. <laughs> it ain't about it, dog. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, Lot lifting up his eyes like. Yeah. You know, it was just like, yeah, like, okay. You know, Abram is like, all right, you choose. You know, like, you so what, choose. What I give it up right to you. He sh it should have been a fight. Like, you know, when, when two good, like, not like when me and you go out to eat, right? Because I always try to set them up. Like, we go out to eat, I'm like, oh, I'm going to pay the bill. It's supposed to be a fight. It's supposed to be like, nah, 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 I'm going to pay the bill. Nah, 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 I'm going to pay the bill. It should have probably, a, probably that little back and forth. You know, like, no, 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 you choose. You're the eldest, you know. You're my uncle. This is your land, like you said. The Lord has promised you all these things. That's what we should have heard mm. coming out a lot. But instead, it was like, really, I get to pick? And the first thing you do is lift up your eyes. Yeah. And you like, yeah. It's like you've given like them the... Right, that, right. You know <laughs> yeah. that meme with the dude in the, in the, behind the tree? <laughs> <laughs> you start to rub your hands like, okay, <laughs> now we going... Cause, and like I said, it's... um. You didn't hear about gold and silver and these things. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at your uncle. Your uncle's up. You coming up now. You know, you the you the nephew. You coming up. All right, you got your little livestock now. You getting your little, you getting something. And now your uncle's like, now here comes land. So it's like, I'm looking at it as like a come up story with him. And you're just, like you said, you got no, you're not seeing no relationship with God there. So you're making all these decisions on your heart. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride right, of right. life. These are what you're making the decisions, decisions on, on. Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, y you about to come up and you can't resist. And you know what I like? This is very interesting when he says, you remember in, um, the previous chapter when we said that um, Abraham built uh, the house of Bethel. Be it was be the altars between uh, Bethel and, and AI. AI. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Bethel was on the west. 
you know, the house of God. And on the east was ruins. And where does he, where does he lead? He moved towards ruins. East. He moved towards the east. Right. And what's interesting, where you see the direct um, comparison, when you com- compare and contrast those two, Abraham and, and Lot, you see that Abraham walked by faith because he didn't, he didn't see anything but who? A lot walked by sight. Abraham being generous and magnanimous. Lot being greedy and worldly, right? Who what was Abraham looking for? When you um, compare with all the other scriptures, God, I mean, Abraham was looking for a city built by God. What did Lot look for? He looked for a city that was built by man, which eventually was destroyed, right? And he was known as the father of faith. Lot, not a father of faith. Abraham was an heir of all things. Lot, everything was destroyed. But And you're just seeing a contrast between these two. You know, and and we're seeing and and I personally think that he started getting a taste of that when he went into Egypt. I know you guys probably disagree. Nah, nah, nah. I see that. I see that. I see that. (laughs) From when he was there, it's like, yo, the seed, the seed, the seed started planting, being planted Mm -hmm. out of you know. So he he saw that, and you know what's crazy, like your uncle held you down, Mm. and his decision was an advantage to himself, right? That selfishness. Mm-hmm. He he could have he could have been like, Unc, you have way more responsibilities than I do, right? Go ahead. Right. But he didn't do that, right? He, everything was was self. It was, you know, his eyes, what he saw, mm-hmm. and we see that the it compares it to Egypt. You just saw the drama that your uncle went through in Egypt. Mm. You guys could have died. Right? right, and then and then thinking about the garden, so it it was very pleasing to the eyes, and that's the direction that he went, and so that's that's how he messed up. And you know the thing is, is that the eyes see what the heart loves, and mm-hmm. the thing is that the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Straight up. So his heart was already there. He made right. that decision because his heart was. It wasn't. It wasn't the decision that changed his heart. You know, right. his heart was already right. there. Right. That's right. why he made the decision. Right. You know, it's, it's, we do it all the time. Yeah. You know, we pick the wrong thing and it's like, oh, no, that thing messed me up. Nah, nah. you was already messed up. He was already, right. exactly. <laughs> you was already right. a bad person. You know, you was already, um, um, you're, you know, your heart was already lusting after that thing. And that's right. why you picked it. Right. Right? Well, so, what's crazy, too, is that the law didn't make that decision easy for him. I mean, uh, because it says that it w- he compared it to the Garden of Eden. Can you imagine how that must have looked at that point to mm-hmm. him? You know, and it's it just, looked good, man. Yeah, it looked amazing. And and sometimes the Lord puts those things in front of you, those temptations. Not, you know, but and we have to choose. We always have to choose the Lord, man. Right. So Egypt had the Nile, right? It, it was it was well watered. Mm-hmm. So that's an advantage. I got these herds. You got to be a place where there's water. Mm-hmm. So he's looking at you know the 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 land was lush, mm. right? And it was bountiful. So he saw that and he was like, nah, it's all about me. It's all about, you know, me coming up too. So that's the decision he made. And he made the decision, like you and I'm glad you said that. That's why he made the decision. It was based you know, on those it things. It was based on those things. Right. It's like, like you, you said, like he has his family. Right. Now you're responsible for people. And, you know, it might have not been I know we give it a bad rap, but it might have been a decision off of that too. Just you know, you you got your response you you got responsibilities you got to take care of. So it's like, yo, I'm going to move to this place. You know, sometimes you think like, oh, I'm going to move here because, you know, I could get a bigger house and you know, the kids could go to a better school mm-hmm. and this and that and do, and this is why you're moving and it's like, nah, this is not what the Lord has for your life. So it's very important that you I would say kind of check in with God and know what the Lord wants for your life, you know, because something could look good. Like you move into another state and it could look awesome. Like, yo, this is going to be perfect for me and my family. But the Lord is like, that's not what I have for you. See, that's why I know. So, so that's, that's a good point. (laughs) That want to leave Brooklyn and go to Texas, but I'm staying baby. (laughs) So, so great point. So do you feel that if you have to make a move, right? I got to move to a new state. I got to, oh, I want to get a new job. That you have to get the green light. Like God has to give you that direction. I would say so. Yeah. I would yeah. definitely lean on God. Doesn't he want to be involved in every decision you make? 
I mean, the beautiful thing is that there's liberty in Christ. So every, right? yeah, we that, we have that liberty. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So if God doesn't tell you to go, but is it His will for you? So if He doesn't tell you to go, you shouldn't go. If you don't, yeah, I, I would say if you're praying and interceding, and the Lord doesn't give you the peace to to make that move, then I wouldn't make that move. I, so I, so here's I, what I'm seeing. I, I, the, Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, because I was gonna say, you know what? Um, I go back and forth on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, nah, you, you know, no, nah, no. Nah, um, the reason I go back on f- and forth on this because I believe, like, as born again Christians, born again believers, you know, I believe that we're walking in the Holy Spirit, right? Right. Okay, and I think that we can make decisions, and when we make decisions, if they're if they're against the will of God, He'll give us a check. But it's not like yo, you know, like oh, am I gonna um, I think when we make moves, yes, we're going to pray on it. We're going to seek the Lord. Um, but then, like, if we do make that move, and if it's the wrong move, he'll let you know. And I also think, You like, know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's like, oh, he didn't tell me to go. So, like, you know, I, I don't think it's really that way. And and, 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 I, and, I, also, and I also think that not everybody's going to see it all the time. Because you yeah. got to think about, look at Abram. The Lord tells you, leave your family, leave your country. You think everybody got it? Like, you got to even think about his wife. You know, you you in Earl of Chaldees, you in the city, everything is popping and the Lord is telling you to get up and go do something. We're going to see that with Abram. So sometimes the Lord will tell you to go, like, will give you the green light and everybody else don't get it. Right. You know, everybody else don't really get what you're supposed to be doing. Like, and that's why I said, like, Abram is a perfect example. You think everybody in his family understood that he had to go? They probably looked at you, what are you talking about? You're going to leave Earl of Chaldees to go to no, to follow this God to go nowhere? It don't make sense. So, but my thing is, that's between you and God, right. you know, so it, it it has to, I feel like we all have a relationship with God, you know, you know, God is going to let you know, right. and it's not necessarily that everybody's going to understand. That's one thing I, I want to point out. Not everybody's yeah, going to understand the move. Yeah. So some people might be looking at the move, like that's a crazy move. And it's like, nah, this is what God told me to do. Right. You know, but I feel like a Christian respect. should get that confirmation. That's just me. I, so, I so too. obviously there was an issue. That issue had to get rectified. Mm-hmm. Um, Abraham did the right thing and how he did it. What was wrong with Lot was how he made his decision. Mm-hmm. Right? It was based off his eyes. It was based right. off Egypt. Right. So his heart, right? His yeah. heart is revealed mm-hmm. in that. Um, and it was, it was, it was last week. You know, Pastor Rich, he sent a Devo and it was talking about that. Right. The word of God is clear and what we should do and what we shouldn't do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the will of God. Right. A lot of times we want to know the will of God in our lives for certain things. The the book is clear. Love each other. That's clear. That's the will of God. Do that. Right. Right. And the, the word of God is clear in what is rebellion and what you shouldn't do. Right. So now there's other things in our lives that we have to make decisions about. Yes. Moving, you know, jobs, thousands of things. Yeah. Right. So is it every little thing, yo, God, should I get a new job? Should I? But you said it, there's also liberty, right? Right. And we're going to, we're going to read later on where after Lot leaves, you know, we got to get into it, but and a lot of the decisions that we make where there's no clear answer from God, right. God is going to go before you, Correct. wherever you go, because you have liberty to go certain places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are specific things that the Lord is going to call you to do and yeah. call you, you know, for a certain purpose. Right? And right. he's going to be clear. Right. But there's certain things where you're like, man, should I get this job? All right, well, why do you want the job? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If the job is saying, yo, you got to be working seven days a week and I'm going to take you away from mm-hmm. fellowship serving. Well, obviously you shouldn't take the job Yeah, because right. right. now it's going to take you out of the, the will of God. Right. That's right. what so, I'm talking about. Cause okay. you know why? Cause the word clearly tells you what the will of God is. Right. Right. But if you were like, well, this job is more convenient. I don't have to travel. It pays more. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. like, all right, well yeah. that makes sense. And if you decide to do that, right. The Lord is going to go no, before you. Definitely. Right. Right. And, and I see the same thing in moving. It's like sometimes if if the Lord have you a place for a particular purpose and you know the will of God, fine. But then it's like, all right, should I move? Well, the Lord didn't tell me. 
Like, well, well, my block, they shooting people up left, <laughs> left and yeah, right. Like, I'm I, out. Right. Like I said, but yeah. the Lord is going to go. And yeah. so it's a heart issue where we're seeing yeah. the heart of Lot right. and his decision. Yes. And, and, you know, my whole point is like, you know, not every decision we're going to get this clear answer. message answer from God. But his word is pretty clear on his will. Right. And if you're operating in that, then the, whatever direction that you're going in, the Lord is going to go before right. you. Because, you know, um, I like what you're saying because the thing, um, we had a message, our pastor um, at, at the church, he gave a clear message. He said, I know the will, the will of God in your life. And he said, that's a very bold statement that I'm making. And everybody's looking at him. He's like, I know the will. You know, the will is in the scriptures and the will of God in your life is to be sanctified. That is the will that's of the God. Will. That's that it. That is the, the bottom line as Christians mm -hmm. is to walk in this sanctification, mm -hmm. you know? So that is the the uh, the entire umbrella, the overarching uh, um, decision in our lives is right. to be sanctified. Right. So now these little decisions day to day, moving here, moving there, you know, the whole thing is that, like like Marcus said, if it's in the will of God in terms of you being sanctified, you know, the thing is that we have to make sure that when we make decisions, that it's not off of the lust of the eyes and, and, that's, lust of the flesh and that's what I'm saying. And the pride of and life. And that's what I'm saying. There's people who that's make the, those the decisions. Like I said, that like with Lot, he lifted up. He saw his eyes. He saw the the, the, the land, right. but not understanding. Dog, you're pitching your tent towards Sodom. Right. And the word said you know that the saying? men over there was wicked. wicked. Right. right. So it's clear. So so the author is letting you know he knew where he was going. Right. Okay. He knew the people that was there. Right. He knew the atmosphere, but he wanted those things. And that and that's what I'm saying. A lot of times Christians will make those decisions. Even you understand, you'll talk yeah. to them and they'll be like, like you said, it's like you understand that's not a good move, but yeah. because you could get a bigger house, there's better schools. You're thinking, like I'm saying, you're seeing it how lot seeing. You're just seeing yeah. the land, right? You're not, you're not um putting those other things into factors, right? You understand? And, and those other things are clearly not in the will of God, right? Right. That's clear. Like this is clear. Right. Other things are not clear. Mm. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Actually, Andrew, just, you could finish the last section because I think it kind of goes into the point that we're talking about right now. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar, altar there to the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I'm saying the difference. Lot lifted up his eyes. Where Abram, the Lord lifted up his eyes. Mm. That's that's why I'm saying there's a big difference mm -hmm. when you're making a move as a Christian, and the Lord shows you the difference. You know, it's the Lord that lifted up Abram's eyes because Abram's first reaction when it came to this was, "Lot, you pick. The Lord is gonna provide. Mm. He always. Yo, it was. Yo, you just see this fall back on God, like." Like you said, even though the land is mine, listen, the Lord is going to provide. I just want to, he, he had his priorities in order. He knew what was important. What was important is this relationship with my nephew. You know what? We fighting. The Lord's going to provide. Where you want to go? Then you're seeing the heart of his nephew. He lifted up his eyes. Where Abram, it was like the Lord lifted up his eyes. So you could clearly tell that the Lord, this decision, this, the, the, what happened, the Lord was involved and he protected Abraham. Yeah. Like Abraham was fearful before. That's why you ran to Egypt. But this time you trusted me. Look, I lift up your eyes and this land that you have. And now you're seeing it. So that's what I'm saying. When it comes to decisions as a Christian, like the Lord always, like, like you saying, you're operating in the will of the Lord. You'll be the communication with God. It's going to, I'm not going to say it's going to be crystal clear because faith, faith involves sometimes steps, right? You know, sometimes it might just be like, you just moved there. You don't know how things is going to work out. You don't know how you're going to get the job. You don't know nothing. Right. And a lot of times Christians are fearful where they be like, oh, I don't know nothing. I need to know all the details before I move. No, 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 no. God already told you to make that move. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to go before you, you know, but there's times where no dog, your heart is just 
of to better your situation like a lot and it was clear that's why the that's why that's why i think the, the spirit he he showed the difference Mm. Lot lifted up his eyes. With Abram, nah, I lifted up Abram's eyes. Mm. I you, was involved with you, that. What's cool is you can see the, their heart, you know, is because when Lot left, it just says he left mm. after he got that blessing, right? Uh, when Abram got that blessing, what did he do? He set up an altar, mm. you know? So he got that blessing, and he immediately felt the need to thank the Lord for it. When Lot was like, all right, let's go. He grabbed his stuff, and he was out. Because it was clear from God. Like, That's with clear. Abram, it was clear. That's why he's like, yo, be it. the Lord lifted up my eyes, worship. Mm. You know, and, 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 and it's the, a relationship, B. God the is Lord always said, with you. The Lord said, go south. Go west. He didn't say any of that. He was like, Yo, north, south, east, and west, go. <laughs> Wherever on. you go, mm. I'm going to go before you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, how, that's how I relate it to, now you've seen the liberty, mm. right? Mm. Abraham having right. that liberty in God. God wasn't specific in where he should go. You know what I'm saying? He gave yeah. him the four corners. Right. And he was like, yo, dog, that's, make the decision. Where do you want to go? But Abraham's heart is to worship God. God. So God is like, yo, dog, wherever you go, I'm going to go before you. So that's how I relate this back to, you know, us. When we have it's certain it's decisions to make. Mm -hmm. And the decision is something like, oh, a new job. It pays more. That's that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you understand what I'm saying? That's a good thing. It pays more. No, but I'm you. You saying that there's people that struggle with that. So. There's people yeah, is like, people yo, that should I should that. I get a new job? Right. Well, did the Lord say that? Yeah, yeah. There's people that. There's people that. There's people that. Go, that and the go Lord there. is like, nah, yo, you're right, you're right. yo, north, south, east, west. Right, it's all right, yours. Right. Right. I'm gonna go before you. Right. Right. Does the job is the job gonna take you away from mm -hmm. God? from the will of God right, right. and and I, I say that with something that's clear right let's say you get a job and the job is like oh you got to work on Sundays right so now you know if I work on Sundays then that's going to take me away from me serving right that's clear but my question to you is do you feel like this times where the Lord will tell you something and everybody else don't understand no, yeah, of yeah. course, and that's yeah. and that's why that's where I I give the liberty, because it's no, no, a, but the Lord is telling you something direct. That's clear. I'm talking about things where you don't know. Okay, yeah, I see. What you're you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. certain decisions right. where it's kind of like right. a job, or I'm gonna move to a different state, mm -hmm. right? And some people will be like, "Well, did the Lord tell you to move?" Yeah, <laughs> would nah, you agree? Nah, that's not what. I no, nah, nah. but would you, but. <laughs> Would you agree that the Lord gives you that peace to do something like that every time? If it's something that it's, he's not against? No, I don't think so. I, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you might get nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It's Sometimes you could, be, you could be wrestling with it in your mind. Yeah. And the Lord is like, you want to move? Oh, yeah. But I'm going to go I'm before saying. you. But if he doesn't put a clear conviction that it's wrong. Then you then you have the green light is what I'm saying. Right? You might not get anything. That's, yeah. that's the point I'm saying. Because here, here's my point. And and I, I you know I initially started with we know the will of God through His Word, we know what's right, what we should do, the sanctifying process, right. and we know what we shouldn't do. That's clear and distinct. Certain things in our lives we have to make decisions where it's not, yeah. like you picking a job. That's not clear. Not all the time. Not all the time. You know it's not clear. Sometimes it's faith, B. Sometimes right. you got to make decisions for your family. Mm -hmm. And I and this point right here where the Lord is like north, south, east, west. Okay. Which direction, God? North, south, east, west. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. which south? <laughs> yeah, there's people like that, and that's yeah. why I understand because there's people like right. that. That's how yeah. I'm. I'm. There's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Like that. A lot of people yeah, like you're that. seeing Abraham with the liberty, with the liberty to choose. Yeah. But the Lord is like, whatever you choose, I'm gonna go I'm before, gonna go before you. you. Right. It's out there, and I, I'm kind of relating it to to certain things that you know as as adults we have to make decisions for our families, mm -hmm. and it could be a job, it could be moving. Where it's not clear in terms of God, should I move? God is like, do you want to move? Yeah. He could be like, all right, go ahead. I'm well, gonna go before you. What about mm -hmm. choosing a wife? 
Andrew, we had that talk before. Wow. <laughs> and it didn't go so good. I tell you, I take, I take baby steps. When you choose a wife, first, first you need to find a woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you need choosing to go on a, a date. And then you need to go on a date to get to know her. <laughs> and then all right, and that gets to know all of that. <laughs> but what's, you what's your question? Steps, I'm just man. saying, like you said, there's liberty in the Lord, right? So if, yeah. if God doesn't put conviction, but he doesn't give what? you the peace... That's a big. That's a big decision. But what's what's your question? Exactly. So how do you put how do you put that decision in here? If the Lord to gives us a wife? all of that liberty, so you're saying it doesn't matter? No, I'm I'm saying there's certain things that you might not get, you know, a distinct, clear answer from God. Mm. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it. You can't move in. A direction and I'm relating it to a new job or I'm moving right so now if a wife if you you know if we go to Paul Paul is like listen if you could I'd rather you rock alone but if you want to get married then get married you have that liberty to get married so now the process is finding a wife it's meeting somebody and getting to know them yeah if you is this somebody I could fall in love with is this somebody that is right. love the Lord then marry them Mm, I don't correct. think it's going to be like the Lord is going to be like, she's yeah, the one. Nah. <laughs> but you hear so many stories where they say that. Well, they're lucky. That's right. <laughs> where they say that's God, everybody, that's, everybody's different. Yeah, everybody, that's, the, that's, everybody's that's the point I'm making people. that everybody's it's different. It's an individual but, relationship yeah. that you have with the Lord. And that's yeah. my point. That's the thing. The, the, it's a relationship with God, B. That's, the, that's my point. When making these decisions, it's a relationship ship with God. There's plenty of times I've made decisions where people looked at me like, yo, dog, what are you doing? Right. And I get it clear. Like, I get it that, like, Abram, get away from your family, get away from your country. Dog, everybody in Earth probably was like, what are you, 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 you're insane. But it was clear to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it always goes back to a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, you're in his will. Mm -hmm. Dog, there's going to be times it's going to be clear, times it's not going to be clear. Sometimes it might just be the first step where God might just be like, take this step. The rest of the steps, we're going to go as we go. And I I understand that because there's Christians that struggle with that. They want the whole thing mapped out. Sometimes there's Christians that want and, the whole and, thing mapped and, out. And it's you, like, no. You know what it is? Look, God just told you to move. And we overthink uh, things. Right. Yeah. We overthink a situation. We overthink a decision. Right. Thinking that, dog, it has to be written in the sky no. and li with lightning. No. Then I can move. And But the Lord is kind of like, what do you want to do? <laughs> All right, that's what you want to do. I'm gonna go before you, cause you you're bringing God with you in that decision, and right. that decision is clear according to His word right. that it's not going against the will of God. Not cause either. like you said, we know the will of God. Right. Now is the decision that you're making going against the will of God that is is evident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The will of God is evident. So now is it going against that? Right. Then you shouldn't do it. Yep, exactly. Is it not? Is it something that's you know, then I do it. And if you do it, the Lord is going to go before you because you're bringing God with you. Yeah. Just like Abraham, north, east, south, west, wherever Abraham went, he was going to build the altar there. Yeah, The Lord wasn't specific, right? And as we know how the Lord is detailed, how he knows everything, the Lord could have been like, go east, <laughs> go west. Very specific, but he wasn't specific. Right. He right. left that decision to Abraham. to Abraham. It's like with Adam. But wherever you go, you're going to build an altar yeah, when you get over It's there. like with Adam. Yo, bring the animals. Let me see what you're going to name them. Like I said, it's a relationship, bro. It goes back to that. Like, you know, it, he didn't say, well, you're going to name this animal. No, God, it's a real relationship with God. And right. a lot of times we make it legalistic. Right. We, you know, like you said, it, it, we make it real rigid and legalistic, and it's not like it's not like that, bro. And and for and I mean, if you think about it, like like you were saying earlier. God's not just going to give you the whole map. You know, he wants you to take these little steps of faith to increase your faith, right? Because um, could you imagine, like, for example, he told Joseph, oh, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be thrown in prison. You're going to do this. You're going to this all. You think he's going to, he, he would have made a move? Joseph was like, I'm staying he's right. He's like, I'm staying right here. I'm not going to follow my brothers. You know, so that <laughs> that's that's the thing. Like, if you give him the entire story of what's, if the Lord revealed to you, like, what you, the atrocities you was going to face, the testing, the trials, you probably like, I'm I don't want that. Yeah. You know, and you would have stayed right there. So I think the Lord reveals to us step by step so that our faith could increase 
for each moment of our lives so that we're able to face those upcoming tests that we're going to have to, you know, that we're going to be challenged with. A lot so of he can't lay the whole thing out before us because we wouldn't have make a move and would not grow. Yeah. That's the same reason why he says, yeah, nobody knows, you know, when I'm coming. Nobody knows the day or the hour. That's in order for us to, like, grow. Because if he told us exactly when he was going to come, what would happen? We all would have waited, never got saved, lived in a sinful life, never have victory in our lives. And then the last minute, then get saved. You, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. It's, that's, how it's man, that's how man that's how works. man works. I agree with you, but you you said something that the Lord always gives you a little bit of it, right? So you can take those first steps, and that's I I feel okay. like with the, any decision you make, if you're praying and asking your Father for guidance, I feel like He's gonna give you that. You know what I mean? I do believe there's liberty, but I still think, as the Creator of the universe, He wants to be. Included in every decision, whether or not it's a new job or but moving how? somewhere else. And I, ag- I agree. He you wants know? you. Yeah. He wants you. How? No, no. But the thing is, I don't. I don't agree that everything. He he gives you an inclination. Right. He wants to be included because he wants you to bring bring him yeah, with we, you. Right. Yeah. So if and that's the point. So, but if you're praying, if you're a person who's praying about every situation, you might not hear right? nothing. How would? Why would God not? help you make that because he's like make the decision and i'm gonna go with you yeah but you're like <clears throat> i want to know what you want me to do he's like you have the liberty to choose and i'm gonna go with you just like just like um abraham could have been like what direction lord mm-hmm. you understand what i'm saying and the lord is like north south east west and he was like that's four which one <laughs> there's christians and like the that, lord bro. is like yeah north south east west you pick one yeah whatever you pick take me with you that's it. Or I'm gonna go before you. That's it. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Where certain things is just you're not gonna hear from God a distinct answer. But we put ourselves in this overthinking process where we overthink everything. Cause we think, is this in the will of God? The will of God is clear. Right. Okay. We already have straight black and white. Dog, that's yeah. re- so that's let's relig- always start with this. That's religion, B. That's religious. Right. You know, yeah. that, that becomes that's the law, you know. That's, and, that's, and we have we have that and it's a growing in grace process you know you grow like just like how abraham is growing in his faith yo, you grow to that it doesn't you know when you first get saved so, and you especially if you come from a religious or legalistic background you move yeah. like that right you know you gotta you move like this is how we moved in my religion or my cult or whatever so i'm gonna bring it here and god is like nah god he purges that out of you and shows you that it's a real relationship you know, and as the closer you get to God, like you said, the more you grow in grace and you're able to exercise that liberty because God, you know, that God is always with you, you know, and it's and, and it comes in God. And he he gives you um, I should say he, he gives you like the, the stamp of approval different sometimes, you know, it, it always it's not it's not always the same, bro. You got to be flexible, man. You can't. You can't put them in a box and move like that. You'll be, that's religion, bro. So yeah. with the example with finding a wife, the will of God is not to be equally yoked. Unequally, unequally yoked. yoked. Un- unequally I mean, yoked. Un- unequally yoked. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the will of God. That's the will of God. Yeah. That's it. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to tell you the, ex- he might not tell you the exact same person. You might not, certain people, they meet somebody, oh, it was love at first sight. And sometimes that's true, right? But if you meet somebody and, you know the will of God is for you not to be married to an unbeliever, then don't marry an unbeliever. Yeah. And, and so it, the options are yeah. So, so many options, right? In terms of Christian women. Yeah, you want them but five you don't five think brown no eyes. Specifics about like this is what the Lord has <laughs> what do you mean? Me. This is my ministry. This is the heart God's given me. Wouldn't it be I don't well, not God's will to get someone who would take me away from that? ministry or you know what i mean like even if she's a believer you know there's like there's there's things and that again you, think about. It's, it's, you see it's very getting right. very granular getting, and very particular right. and you're attributing that to god right that's what i said you I get mean, yeah, religious you get legalist legalistic legalistic listen you might meet you somebody where she's me. like i don't care about your ministry <laughs> <laughs> i just right. like you but you could do it i'm gonna chill in the crib but she loves the Lord. Yep. Right. So now it, it comes down to you. It's your preference. Maybe you'd be like, listen, if you want somebody that's going to be lock and step with you in your ministry, then say that's you. Yeah, that's you. You can't. Mm. But that. the Lord said, don't be, you know, unequally, unequally yoked. yoked. Yeah. 
That's right. Find yourself a short. And, and the reason you have to be careful with that, yeah. because a lot of times, your God will give you somebody like you wouldn't, un- you don't understand it at first, you know, but you know, like, let's say, you know that this is, I'm in the will of God. This is God's will. And like I said, it's a faith thing. B. Later on, you're like, oh, I wanted her to be hand in hand with me. And it's like, no, that's not the role I wanted her to play in you. And you don't get it till later, but you, your book, you get it because you trusted God. That's why you'll be, don't forget, it's a, you have to trust God, B. It's about faith. Yeah. It's not about what you want for your life and all of this, bro. That don't, you seen what he did to Abram. That's why I said Abram probably had a whole, everything mapped out in early childies. I'm going to get the crib. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And one day God is like, all right, get out. Leave everything. <laughs> bro. And, you know, it's we, a relationship with God, B. Don't, don't put yourself in this box, B. Like yeah. be like again the liberty you have in Christ. Like yeah. this is a relationship, and Christ goes before you. The Lord goes before you. Be free with that, B. And marriage, marriage is it's you beautiful. Gotta, you got to become something else, right? You know, you you're becoming to become one, to becoming something new. So it might not fit, mm. right? Yeah. So and so that's the part where you know now it's you. If if that's what Ange want. That's okay too. If that's what you're looking for, then that's fine. Yep. Then look for that. But you you know the will of God when it comes to marriage because it's very clear in His Word. Word. Yeah. Right. And I don't yeah. think um, necessarily you have to look for extra things. You you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, Lord, does she have to be, you know, uh, into exactly what I'm into? She might be totally opposite. From yep. Me. But she's, you know, she's, she's a, a Christian. She's a woman yeah. that loves God. She's the woman yeah. for you too. And she's and she's the woman for you. Straight up. And the thing is, if she is, then it's gonna work. Yeah. Not saying it's gonna be peachy and creamy and roses, yeah. but it's gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I think that's what it is. Like that bond will never be broken. And that's what's important. At, at the end of the day, when you're dealing with marriage, right? Yeah. Any obstacle that you guys come into is going to be overcome because you guys are the same, both sons and daughters of, of God from heaven. So now, all right, we're in this thing. We're going to figure it out. Not she might not want to do what you're doing. <laughs> and you might not want to do what she's doing. And majority of times it's like that. But you're going to have to humble yourself and and die and do what she wants to do. Get into a world and die there. So you might have to watch HGTV. (laughs) (laughs) Three hours. So your eyes, your eyeballs dry up. (laughs) But you're going to have to do it, right? Because you're going to love your wife. That's real. Because you know what I'm saying? Because I had difficulty just making the decision moving to PA. That was was rough. But, you know, um, I realized that, okay, my move, I was thinking of a certain ministry that I was dealing with, and I thought my entire thing was that. And then it turned around where yeah. <laughs> it worked out for something different. And then I realized that the Lord was work, working on the both of us. We're both getting sanctified. And I saw even more growth in my wife. Right. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it was like the Lord was really, yeah, this is, you know what I'm saying? I love her just as much as I love you, mm-hmm. and I'm going to continue sanctifying and growing her. So it was it. I mean, I just see my wife just blossom even more and more through the move and I was like yo probably all this was real and, and, and I didn't even realize that I and, was, and that's what I'm saying you'll be it's a faith thing like yeah. if he if he didn't like you said you had this whole plan mapped out yeah. but you know you knew the Lord you know had it on your heart to move and you didn't even understand until yeah. you got there and the Lord is like yo everything the Lord does is way better than you thought yeah you understand what I'm saying it's always wait so that's why it's so important to be in his will to have a relationship with him Stay close to God, B. Right. Stay close to God. It's like like we like we read. Go east, west, north, south. I don't care. You ultra man. <laughs> you gonna be, I'm gonna be close to you. You ultra man, dog. Right. Like I'm. A, you could go wherever. I. It's just about me and you. Right. And you see that even with the Garden of Eden, how we read earlier. Yo, he created this whole thing for Adam, and it was like this is all for you. I'm gonna show you how it's all for you. I'm gonna bring the animals. You name them. That mm-hmm. that whole that part right there that God showed us is to show. That's what it was all about. It wasn't about the Garden of Eden. Mm. It's about having fellowship with man, bro. That's all he cared about. Right. You know, so I'm going to create this earth. I'm going to create a garden. All of that is for you because it's really about us walking in the cool of the day. Right. That's what's important to me, you know? And and I think uh, 
Abraham showed that, right? Wherever he went, God is here. He consecrated the land, built his altar. God is here. So wherever you at, God is going to be here. So right. that's the heart, right? So it doesn't matter what state you're in. It doesn't matter what job right. you're in. Right. Is God there with you? Is right. your heart right. still towards God? Mm -hmm. Then he's going to go before you and open up those doors and, and make it happen. So, it's, you know. Sometimes we overthink things. Right. We try All to the time. hyper spiritualize <laughs> it and like, oh, we got like, nah, dog. Because we think we special, B. Yeah. <laughs> we think so. we think we Moses on the mountain, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the the chapter ends with Abraham building an altar to God, right? His relationship maintained. He came. He he left Egypt, right? Came back to that place he began with the altar and then the chapter closes with him um building an altar which is symbolic of his relationship mm -hmm. with god and i just think i think i'm encouraged by that too it's like nothing no don't feel too much shame to go back you know he had to go back yeah. you know where yeah. it all started where it all began you think about revelation you know where it says um return to your Dude, first okay. love you know just redo you know, repent, redo, and and it's like that's what's happening to him. Like he went through this traumatic thing in Egypt, and now you know, him and his nephew, they're big. You know, they they I should they wasn't bickering, but the herdsman was bickering. He resolved that, and you're just seeing Abraham's heart. He's just like, I just want God be. Now you're starting to see it. Like even with yeah. all this wealth, all these distractions, you got wealth. Yeah, <laughs> you know, your your nephew's herdsman is bickering with your herdsman. Like you got all these distractions, but. You're just seeing Abraham's heart through the whole thing. It's always about, I just want God. I just want God. And he had to go back. He had to go back and redo what he always did, which was build altars. And you're seeing it. And, you know, no matter how far you think you are away from God, you know, you can always come back. You know, that's, that's the reason that Jesus Christ came and paid the price. You know, it says he's faithful and, 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 and he's faithful to forgive us. You know, we, all we have to do is repent and he's faithful to, to forgive us. So it doesn't matter where you're at in your life right now. You know, if you're listening to this, like you can, you can come back. You know, you think about the prodigal son, you know, he was eating slop with the pigs, but he was able to come back. And the crazy thing about it, the father, his father was waiting for him, you know, and that's how the father, that's how the father was looking at Abraham the whole time in Egypt. Right. He's like, yo dog, when you going to come back? Because I'm here. Do you? Have, I already showed you the plan. And God waited for him. And when he came back, God was there. And God reiterated the promise again. Right. You know? Now, that's beautiful because is, that is the life of a born-again Christian. New beginnings. It's always about new beginnings. Because we're always going to stumble. We're always going to fail. We're always going to mess up. You know, we're gonna, and the whole thing is that we can always come back to the Lord. The Lord knew that Abram was going to be a liar, that he was going to mess up in Egypt and do all these things. But he still gave him the promises from before the action. The same way he knew that Isaac was going to be crazy. He's going to choose one over the other. He knew that Jacob was going to be a scoundrel and, and a crook. You know, but he still gave him the promises. He knew David was going to be a murderer and, uh, you know, an um, adulterer and all that. He still chose. He knew Israel was going to go against him. He's going to go into idolatry. But he still chose mm -hmm. the same way he knew all of us was going to fail go against it but he still sent his son to die for us regardless of our performance it was all based on his performance amen oh, no. amen thank god yep epi that's it i will pray oh uh, lord we just thank you so much that you just um you give us these examples lord god you give us an example of abraham and lot right before us today and we could see and we can grow from it we could glean from it and how Abraham, although he failed um, and he lied, Lord God, and he just went and uh, against you, but he still came back and repented and built the altar and you still received him. You still loved him and you still care for him, Lord God. And we thank you for that. And we just pray the same thing in our lives, that no matter where we go, we can build the altar. We can worship you and glorify you wherever we may be, wherever we are in our lives, Lord God, wherever our struggles may be. Um, wherever the famines may come, Lord God, that we could seek your face, seek you and you alone, and that you are the one that will always provide, and you are the one that will always bless. And we thank you for the great blessing of Jesus Christ. That is the only reason that we are here and that we're able to go through these is because of what 
you did when you sent your son to die for us on the cross so that we may have life and may have life abundantly, Lord God. So we ask you, Lord God, to continue to watch over us, Lord God. Let us not fall into the trap like Lot with um, following the ways of the eyes or the lust of the flesh or the pride of life, Lord God. Please allow us to constantly seek you so that we could see you and see outside of that, Lord God. So we thank you and we glorify you and we praise you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.